Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, go ahead and thumbs up the video if you, you know, like the stuff you're seeing. A lot of people have asked, you usually get at least one message a week, how we like the gleaner, if we would recommend the gleaner, our thoughts after running it for a year. So I figured dad and I, we probably, we're probably pretty even an hour spent in this machine. I think we got 300 hours roughly on the engine. We're probably pretty split there. Dad did most of the corn. I think I did all of the beans and most of the wheat. But figured we would talk about our likes and dislikes of after running this gleaner S97 for one whole season. Well, what do you got? What we got? Well, let's start with things you like about the combine. Well, I like it. It's a size of it. It's, it's uh, easy to get around. Now, it is basically the same width as our Alexion. Uh, the cab's quiet. We like that. Controls are nice. Uh, you know, it's just a nice machine. Uh, easy to get stuff. Easy to work on. I haven't had any trouble except that one problem. So we did have a transmission coupler that basically rendered the combine dead in the water. I mean, it, it would not move when that happened. A couple connectors to the, to the transmission to the pump, I guess. And it's in oil and something happened there. So I don't know if that's just, uh, I don't know what happened there, really. It's a little bit jerky. The hydrostat. The hydrostat, because it's electric, I guess, they say. But if you run it four-wheel drive, it kind of takes it out because it, it won't run as fast in each gear. What he means by that is it's just the it's hard to feather it forward like you can with our other combine yep. part of that just might be i don't know if well it's be it's electric stuff our other ones the closest cable so you don't have the feel i guess but outside of that uh, controls are nice like i say uh adjustments uh we never you know change corn to beans a couple times and it wasn't bad at all after you get onto it it ain't bad at all change in a few minutes you got it changed what uh, so when you were running corn, what was the what did you notice about it? I mean the cloth, like there's our 740, that was our main combine, that exact machine, uh, until this combine showed up. What did you notice different about running the cloth versus this well, one? Well, I corn? noticed the cloth. It'll run. It'll eat corn. It does a, you know, as far as hand on it, it'll run. You can uh, run for four, forty-five hundred bushel pretty easy. Don't run that. Usually, it takes real good corn. Usually, yes. Uh, uh, four mile an hour around that. Get four and a half to five. Maybe you get dry corn, some good corn. You might get faster than that. Are you talking about the cloths? The cloths. Okay. And I just see uh, in this, uh, it seems like a sweet spot's about 3,500 to 3,800. He's talking about job. bushels per bushels hour. Bushels per hour doesn't, uh, loss is, is very little. Uh, I think we can do a little bit more of that. We get an, find an aftermarket concave. I think we took the wires out of the concave, helped or the grates, I guess, out of the cylinder helped, and we're going to see for some aftermarket, maybe it helped a little. But the loss wasn't bad at all. Does a good job cleaning everything. But it seemed like I found myself running faster than this. You know, I can run four and a half mile an hour sometimes. It, it, the cabs are much quieter, so I seem I found myself running faster in this one than the cloth because of just uh, the noise. It just, uh, you look down, well, hell, I'm running four and a half mile an hour, maybe the five. And we had good corn, so you know it, it. I'm really satisfied. I didn't think it would handle the 250 bushel corn. Some of it, some of it more than that, and it handled it good. I was really surprised. Now that said, we did overrun the sieves a few times, especially when we first started. We didn't have some things set quite right. If you go back in our harvest videos, there was one day where a guy from Ohio Ag came out and really helped us dial the combine in. After that, I don't know that we really overran the sieves all that much. I mean, uh, maybe... If, if you get on a hillside and it's supposed to compensate a little bit better than some of the others, and I don't know if it does or not, but you would see it uh, it puke a little bit outside. The re they're really sensitive. The, the yield loss bar is really sensitive, I think, and you can change that. Yeah, so we've got our sensitivity, what, on 60 or 80% uh, or something like, something like that. we got it set pretty high. Yeah, and it's like each side plus the center it does the center also and you can set it up whichever you want or all three of them which we usually run it on i did now and uh it's not as for uh, maybe forgiving and just but some it's uh you can fine tune a little bit more you might have to do it a little bit more maybe but it's it's not bad at all really once we got it set it's it's pretty well stay there different varieties corn we got in a variety down here a lot of fodder it was early tough and it really pulled it you know another 50, 75 horse would make a heck of a difference. I think if we were doing it over again, we probably would go for the class nine or class eight machine, the 90 
S98. The only difference is horsepower. Um, I know someone's going to suggest, why don't we just chip this? Well, we got a four-year warranty when we bought this, so we don't want to avoid that. And it's, uh, we're, I think this is probably more so an eight row and a 35 foot machine, 35 foot platform, where we got 12 row and 40 foot plus we got devastators on the corn head, folding corn head, makes it a little heavier. Kind of maxed out, I think. It, it's slow picking up sometimes. And, and folding is real slow, but uh, I guess that's where they are. Uh, the platform, I never run it in beans like Brian did, and he can tell you all about that. I know that, that Crary Air Reel is nice. But it did take some power, I guess. It really does a, a better job and clean things up, I think, than what the cloth does, especially in corn. It doesn't grind it as bad. So one other nice thing I noticed when I ran some corn, I mean, I probably ran two or 200 acres or so of corn through it. The bigger grain tank, this has a 385, and that cloth has a 330 bushel tank. Uh, that, was a, that was a nice uh, improvement. The quicker unload, that auger looks small. It does not look like it is moving grain, but like when this combine broke down and we went back to the Clawson corn, could you tell the difference? Oh, definitely tell the difference, yeah. It, this one unloads it, I think, what is it? Uh, four. 4.9 bushel an hour? No, just or four, and I think yours is 3.3 three like or that. something. No, mine ain't three, whatever it is. I don't know, but it's it's fast. A lot faster than Clawson. Yeah, it's, just, it's just a nice machine. I really like it. I really like it. Would I buy another one? I'd buy another one in a heartbeat. Yeah. I would. The Kloss is a heck of a machine, and you know, don't get me wrong there. I mean, I love my Kloss, but uh, you know, they're quite a bit more money. And they was here, I can't come to, just today, that's why we got it out, and did a PM on it. And what that is, they went all over it. It's Pre for the preventative record. maintenance check. Preventative maintenance check, everything. What was he, three or four hours? He's done. Now, so part of that is it's a takes, new combine, yeah, too. Yeah, too. But uh, the Kloss. It takes about all day because taking the screens out, the bottom panels out, and checking up in there is just a lot more to the cost, moving parts. But uh, overall, the uh, cost might handle tough, tough beans, maybe better. Weedy, green beans, I don't think it would. But we haven't had the green stem beans the last few years, so we haven't had a problem. So one thing to keep in mind, the Kloss has a little bit more horsepower. They're both class seven machines, but that has a C13 400 horsepower cat engine. I think this is a 9.8 seven cylinder, seven cylinder Agco engine. So 375 horse, 400, bigger displacement on the claw, smaller displacement on the on the gleaner. I think horsepower wise, it was okay when the air reel wasn't engaged, but we'll get to that. Uh, right off hand, the one thing, uh, when we first got it, I thought the way this hooked up was silly and not the greatest in the world. Uh, it's still, I mean, it's not as quick as what we're used to with the other combine. You didn't need a wrench. But once this mechanism broke in, I mean, I can hook and unhook this head. I mean, when we're doing beans and double crops, we'll hook and unhook three or four times a day. It takes no time whatsoever to hook and unhook. I mean, pretty pretty quick process, really. Uh, one thing I do dislike is how short the feeder house is. It is hard to see from up there when you're hooking up. I mean, it's just a short feeder house that doesn't stick out as much. And your head, I mean, we're used to running McDonald heads, now we're running an Agco Draper. It presses right up against there. So, I mean, it is a little short. That is one of my main complaints or dislikes, I guess. You have anything yeah, up here? It is short. They did lengthen it four or five inches, but still. Uh, and it's nice. If it's longer, that gives more leverage, so it won't pick up as good weight-wise. It wouldn't pick it up as good. But it's hard to hook up if you get out of seat and it won't move. So you, it is kind of hard to hook up, see what you're doing there. But uh, now we both thought that the offset on the feeder house would be a problem or a pain in the butt running corn. Our corn head is not purposely built for an offset. I mean, it's just has a plate. I mean, did it bother you at all? No, I, you don't notice it. Don't notice it. Never I mean, really notice it. I never noticed it when we got it, but the grain head, same way. It's offset. I never noticed it for a good while. The other thing that's. One thing I don't like on this one, you uh, can't move the feeder house forward and back on this. On the Agco, the heads you can, like the grain platform we can, it's an Agco, but the Capella head, corn head doesn't have it. Yeah, that so head. it is built to where your lateral tilt, or would that be lateral, yeah. is all done through the head. Well, if you're running an aftermarket head that doesn't have that, like we are, uh, well, forward tilt or whatever, um, kind of, kind of a downfall there. Like I said, with the bean head, not a problem. We can tilt that bean head because that is all on the head. It's got good lights on it. It'll, bro it'll, bro it'll light things up, I'll tell you that. But, but pretty much any combine like a, is going to have a full LED package. This one does. Uh, actually, I don't know if this bottom ones are LEDs, but it's it's bright. 
it is very bright one thing these have 520s are these 520s or 580s might be 580s they're a little bit smaller than the other combine duels but this combine is a little bit lighter so it really wasn't ever an issue uh, one thing we do like or i think is neat the way the combine is designed i mean there's like that platform folds down you got a stair a step to reach up one just nice little things there's a step there to get to all your grease points maintenance items just uh nice things now the rock trap it's a little cumbersome it is in here it doesn't i don't think it is bro i think it's just you getting real uh, familiar well, with it. after you get familiar with it it's a problem the rock trap it's open right now matter of fact you open it yeah it's right here you drop that door and stuff will drop yeah out. but you got to reach in here with that stick well, to get it whereas the cloth you're right under it but you're also under the feeder house and that's dangerous but so. the old ones the one i had we grew up on the win five you had to get in there and get it out they didn't have that big long rod it's hard to get in. that big hole wasn't there that big but everything's right here you, you know pretty well ground level and like i say anything that isn't ground level step fl flops over and yeah you can get to it all now there are a lot of electronics on this combine don't get me wrong uh, just like any modern piece of equipment, it has death, uh, lots of computer modules. So people say that these combines are easy to work on. The mechanical parts are, but there are still computerized components that, well, you know, you're still going to need a computer to plug in. It ain't like we can work on that engine without an Agco computer. We do have an auto lube system on it, but there are a couple fittings. Like right here, there's a fitting in there. But pretty much almost everything else is hit with that auto lube system, which is uh, a plus. Now, one thing I was concerned about when we demoed one, there is no monitor for the return elevator. We never plugged it. No, you don't. Now, there, you can see the speed on it. Yeah, it's just got a speed off it's got, so you don't know what, but it's not putting that much. But compared to the cloth, that's one of the main limiting factors on our clothes yeah. was yeah. Uh, you just start to plug your return elevator. You get on a tilt, a little silent on the cloth, and it'll fill that elevator up. And then beans, cucklebirds, it hates cucklebirds. It'll plug that thing up. And but we we never had an issue with this, though. Uh, I don't know why or if it's how it's designed or what, but never never really an issue. So back here in the back, we, we definitely have to say power ladder. Inside, here's where you check your oil. Um, you can get to the, the cylinder or the rotor, I mean. Call it whatever they want. I still think it looks like a cylinder. Somebody didn't clean that for you. You didn't clean it up very good back I was recovering from surgery. I think you and BJ cleaned this one up. I just moved him around the telehandler. So, I've heard people call this the Quonset hut. Call it whatever you want. It's easy to get around in here. Right here, you can ac access your rotor and looky there we can get right to the rotor uh, so ease of access is nice it is a little dirty in there but um yeah there's some adjustments you can make in here from going from small grains to beans and corn in season, we were never in here unless we had an issue. I mean, we would check it, but we never had to adjust our concaves or anything like that manually. Um, when we go back to wheat, we will, but that's a once a season kind of thing. So it does stay pretty clean in here. Uh, it's kind of surprising how just this being enclosed, I mean, you may not look like it's clean in here, but there's not a lot of chaff that gets blown up on the engine. I think that would be a good t-shirt just right on the front let me know what you think now this spreader i was very apprehensive of its spreading capabilities but if you get these adjusted right i thought it spread fine what do you think yeah, it i mean it's really surprising to me that all coming out of this side that you're going to spread it that far and if you don't have the wind it will do it and it'll do it pretty well now we also added an auger extension. We had the biggest auger you could get, but with a 40 foot head, it was very tight unloading on the go. It's my understanding that that's not a factory option, that extension, because height, when it raises up, it is very, very tall. But that three foot extension made a world of difference. Uh, it shoots out of that auger pretty far. With that three foot extension, it's pretty much the same as 
the cloths it had a an extended auger on it and uh, we can dump pretty much the same also a lot of people give the gleaners crap for having one auger uh, never noticed it at all really being an issue you had to watch on a steep and grade steep grade but you would on the other combine too i thought yeah. uh, really not an issue the only thing that sucks about it is right now i can't lift this panel right here without putting the auger up but there's really not a lot under there to get to just basically when we switch crops there's a pull there we have to change uh, the def tank is down here at ground level that's nice but you kind of have to raise this panel to get in there without making a mess but other than that not a big deal the turning radius i think the turning radius still isn't as good what do you think well it ain't bad you can pretty well make a little you know it's not as good as what we had though uh, turning radius part not quite but i think we can still do a little bit more if we wanted to now we did load our tires with beet juice like he said we are running a 12 row folding capella head with devastators it's quite a bit of weight hanging off the front before the devastators with the beet juice tires it was fine wasn't it you no, never i never had any problem at all with any of it now the devastators added about 1200 pounds of weight but it wasn't bad at all. i never had it tippy you know bouncing around much a couple places we never we never took because we knew it might be a problem I guess we was over the cloths anyway. So. Yeah. Other than that, that's pretty much it that I can think of on the outside. You got anything? Um, whenever I was running it in beans, like I said, we were running a 40-foot Agco Flex Draper with a Crary Air System. The Flex Draper, once I got it figured out, I never ran anything but a McDon, ran great. Especially with the, uh, the Crary System. That's kind of the best of both worlds there. But... That Crary did take quite a bit of horsepower. Running 40 foot on a class seven was fine. Running 40 foot on a class seven with the aerial, I was a little underpowered. There was a lot of times that dad was able to run quite a bit faster than I was, probably almost a mile an hour faster. And I was running at 100% all the time. I mean, we weren't taking it easy. We were, as Ron would say, right in the mustard. But um, I think if we had an eight, that would be much better. When I unhook the air reel, they say it takes at least one horsepower per foot. I completely believe them because I could run just neck and neck with him, but I could also watch the beans roll off the front of the head. So it was kind of a trade off there and we chose to keep the beans in the combine. Uh, as far as beans though, um, you know, there's a learning curve to any new combine. There's the, the things that I would set on the Colossus combine. I don't set on this one, but once you get it figured out and get some advice from some people at random and get some experience, it ran beans very well clean them up very well uh, lower splits um, you could usually tell which combine we were running if we were only running one with, as far as what harvested it the fuel economy is uh, uh, the cloth is a little bit better in corn because it's really pulling uh, it's, yeah, it's, again it's, I think that's power though power wise yeah yeah this like I say this this combine probably be better off with an eight row another 75 horse like the big ones got would make a world of difference or 12 road 40 foot head be funny I think yeah, I mean, in times where it was running easy and we weren't lugging the combine, um, and the fuel economy is really good in that 13 to 14 gallon an hour range. And if we were pulling hard, uh, it would be 18 gallons an hour. So you could definitely tell a difference. And when I mean pulling hard, I don't mean 100%. Both of them might have been 100%, but one of them is pulling the engine down. Like we're, you know, we're really lugging that machine. That's when we would hit those high fuel, fuel usage ratings. Uh, one other complaint, Dad kind of touched on it is the uh, front hydraulic system the hydraulic system on the head i mean it just doesn't pick up super fast the folding mechanism we're using on our corn head it's my understanding that the hydraulic part of this combine we're using for that runs the real raise and lower on the bean head so it's just that's not super ideal that's not gleaner's fault though we're running a third party head and just making that work but it's kind of a pain in the butt i mean it takes about four minutes to unfold our corn head but like i say that's more on uh using a third party head but other than that, that's pretty much it on the outside. Now on the outside, there's really no good spot for a toolbox. This is just sitting here. It's not even bolted down, hasn't moved yet. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of space on this platform. Also, they have a nice ladder to get in the grain tank. You have to get in there sometimes. I like that they have a ladder there. It's much safer than me climbing up on there without it. Now inside, This cab is big. It's kind of deceiving though. Like your floor footprint, it's not as big at the bottom as it is the top. It's tapered, makes it feel a lot bigger than it actually is, which is okay. I mean, you do have plenty of leg room. 
I'm six foot four and I fit in this combine pretty well. And that's kind of saying something because there's been some combines that don't fit in the greatest. The claw sits a little tight. I mean, they're all doable. They're all, I could sit in all of them all day, but this combine is more comfortable for me. The uh, control handle, the up and down is backwards on the claws. So that took me about a month and a half to get used to. Pretty used to it now. I like how this handle is laid out. Everything is easy to find, uh, really comfortable. The buttons are fine, no complaints there. The monitor, pretty much got the hang of it. We are only using it to run the machine though. We use an ag leader for yield monitoring and all the, all the other good stuff that comes with that. We have this cubby hole here. Um, that's just where stuff goes and I never see again because I can't see it from here. Kind of a useless space, but hey, at least you have something there. On the cloth, there's just a flat piece of plastic there with nothing, it's not usable at all. So I guess something's better than nothing. Plenty of cup holders. Um, plenty of 12 volts. This makes a cup holder. I mean, I usually leave the seat folded down unless someone's riding with me. Put my snacks and my coffee mug there usually. Cup holder there. And then they call that a fridge. Or they call it a cooler. It does absolutely nothing. Um, just know that if you get one of these things, that cooler is just about worthless. I mean, if that unscrewed and you could put a water bottle in there, it would do a lot better job. This combine did come with an ag cam monitor. One thing about it though, you just have pigtails down here for those cameras. They're not ran anywhere specific. So you run those yourself. Not a big deal. Um, we've got one at the back of the combine and that's it. Uh, probably put one on the auger at some point and maybe one in the grain tank. But for now, that's all we've got and they work fine. But yeah, that's pretty much it on the inside of the machine. Like I said, the cab's very comfortable very quiet no real complaints there other than the cooler that the, the the cubby hole under the passenger seat it didn't come with a roller uh necessary need to have one need to put this one in here though put it messed up put it on the outside so the power ladder very nice convenient thing it's way more convenient than you would think it would be so one thing that i forgot to mention where this thing sticks out you can hook stuff pretty easy when you're turning I uh, remembered because I just about hooked the door right there. I guess I'd put that in the complaint list. Other than that, that's it. That's what we think of the machine after one year. Definitely would buy another one. Like Dad said, the price point on this combine is much cheaper than pretty much any other Class 7 machine on the market. And at the end of the day, it does exactly what that combine would do. But thanks for watching. Like I said, if, you, if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to thumbs up the video and leave us a comment. And we'll see you in the next one.